What about the effect on your health? This is a very interesting study by Dr. Ramesh Manocha from Australia, and he tested 350 Sahaja Yoga meditators, and he compared them to a group of people, a mixed group who practice all sorts of meditation, Hatha Yoga, mindfulness meditation, and so on, and the Australian norm, and the norm consisted of thousands of people. What he found is the Sahaja Yoga meditators were better in their general health, in their social function, and in their mental health. They weren't better in the physical function, but that's because Sahaja Yoga is not a sport. Then he tested, what is it what makes them better? So he tested, is it the hours they meditate? Is it the amount of mantras they say? Is it how many meetings they attend? And nothing was related to the, the, the benefits other than one thing, and that was the frequency of the mental silence. So this is what works. And here you see the national average. Here you see people who meditate, but they only become thoughtless less than once per month. They have no benefit. Here are the ones who are thoughtless once or twice per month, no benefit. But here are the ones who are once or twice thoughtless. And you see they are significantly better in their mental health than the national average. Here are the ones who are once or twice per day mental, mental uh, thoughtless. They are also much better, and the ones who are thought for several times per day, they are just have an amazing mental health, as you can see here. So in conclusion, it's the state of mental silence which works, nothing else. But what this means also, that means if you meditate, you need to find a meditation which teaches you to achieve the state of mental silence. Otherwise, you have no health benefits. He found exactly the same on general health, so this is physical and mental health, so exactly the same. This is the average. These are people who are thoughtless several times per day, a significant improvement of their uh, general health, and so on. And then here, if you, the same, if you meditate for years and you never go thoughtless, you may also not have benefits, so you have to try a bit harder to, <laughs> to get there. <coughs> then he measured exactly the same on a questionnaire which picks up anxiety and depression in the population. And what he found is the yogis were significantly less distressed on this questionnaire, so they're far less likely to be anxious and depressed. And again, the benefits were associated with the frequency of the thoughtless awareness. So here you can see those who are several times per day thoughtless, they are in the very low risk category. So these people will never, uh, will never be, be, become depressed or anxious. And then it goes down, so the less often you achieve thoughtless awareness, the less protected you are against depression and anxiety. This is a study by Simon uh, Golochekin, where he looked at the personality of yogis versus the personality of non-yogis. He found that the meditators are significantly less depressed, significantly less neurotic, have less paranoid thoughts, less anxious, and less difficulties in identifying and expressing emotions. So these are the long-term effects. So in conclusion, Sahaja Yoga meditation has a significant effect on your health, but the benefits are associated with the state of mental silence. So that's the key thing. And that's what you should be aiming for. The more often, the better. Now, what are the effects on the illness? <laughs>